it would not it would not have been possible for us to continue that journey on a continuous basis so we need to ensure that development takes place on a continuous basis number 2 we have to ensure that all the support schemes that the poorer sections of the people of the country were enjoying were not stopped in order to ensure that we fight a successful war that continued the fertilizer support schemes the samurdhi schemes every such support scheme continued without a single cent being denied to those who were in need of it that was a very important facet the third was equally important to see that all the support that was necessary for the war effort was provided through the budgetary support that is why when mr gotabe rajapaksa mentioned that the forces increased by 80000 or 20000 there was money that was supported for those efforts when you wanted new equipment it was given when you wanted to have new areas which you wanted to protect it was given so in order to ensure that the support is maintained the funding has to come in some people ask us how did the money come it came i think when you have a determination then the money comes and you find ways and means of raising the monies and that is what really happened so believe we believe that these three factors combined very effectively to ensure that we were able to bring about the result of defeating terrorism like what we are discussing today so when we look back on the post war period we can also proudly say that it was a vital investment in the history of our country it is not a investment it is not a expenditure that we it, it's not a expenditure like what many people would think it is we think of it as an investment because it was an investment in peace a few months after the war ended i remember there was a journalist from india who spoke to me and said that he wants to do a interview with me so i said yes that's fine uh, let me do that and then he said actually i want to do this interview with you because i did a interview with you 6 to 8 months ago and there you told me that it was imperative that sri lanka finishes this effort and defeat terrorism and he thought at that time that it was an unusual comment from a governor of the central bank and he thought it was not an appropriate comment from a governor and that why is he saying this few months after the war was over then he said i knew what you were talking about i knew you knew at that time what extraordinary change it would do to your country's economy and that is the reason why you were supporting this investment right from that time but it's useful to see how much we spent actually my dear friends we spent about 4% of our gdp on the total defense investment and that was a, around 5.5 billion dollars for a period of 4 years 2006 to 2009 those are the four years during which time the strengthening of the forces had to take place that was the time that we had to buy equipment that was the time that we had to actually wage the entirety of the operations and during that time the total defense cost as voted by the parliament and used up by the forces was a figure of around 5.5 billion dollars but the outcome of that we know is that's what we are discussing today and mind you that amount favors uh, figures quite reasonably with the military spending compared to many other countries we have taken these facts from the cia world fact book and you would find that sri lanka does not figure very highly as a very high proportion of its spending on the military side and if we just compare that with some of the other wars on terror as practiced today you see the us government has spent something like 910 billion dollars so far that is only up to 2009 in the iraq as well as afghanistan conflicts 910 billion dollars and the amount that they had to spend on training alone i think the commander of the army will be interested in knowing these figures on training alone they had to spend 39 b 
billion dollars. And if you compare that with the entire cost of what Sri Lanka spent, which was just 5.5 percent, uh, 5.5 billion dollars, we spent only about 14 percent of the training cost that other countries had to expend on their respective wars. So I believe it's a, it's a good time to pay tribute to you that you have been able to be so productive, to be able to deliver value in this effort in such an extraordinary manner, with such a small budget. That is all, of course, that we could afford as well. But with that, you have been able to deliver. And I think that's a point that sometimes you must also know and reflect upon as the productivity of the Sri Lankan effort. Today it is clear that extraordinary economic benefits have accrued to the country after terrorism. We have returned very, very quickly to 8% growth. I don't really know of any country which has been able to have a 30-year conflict ended and then move to a very high growth path of around 8% in such a short period of time. We have been utilizing the production capacities of our nation, the ports, the tourism, the agriculture, the fisheries, much better than what we have ever been able to do. There has been a marked productivity improvement in our nation, and we have already seen the brain drain that we have been experiencing moving towards a brain gain. The government has been able to maintain its fiscal budgets much better from a 9.9 percent fiscal deficit in 2009, which was one of the toughest years. We have brought it down to 7.9 percent last year. This year we will have a 6.8 percent uh, budget deficit. From next year, we will be moving towards the 5 percent mark. An extraordinary change in the way government has been able to manage its finances as a result of peace returning. So we have better macroeconomic fundamentals. I think this is one of the only times in our history that Sri Lanka has had benign macroeconomic fundamentals throughout its economy. A good inflation rate, which is in single-digit mid-numbers, interest rates which are low, growth which is 8% plus, reserves which are at its highest in its history, unemployment down to 4.9%. I think some of those figures are figures that many countries which are developed today would give an arm and a leg to borrow from. So it's a story which is clearly an indication that the nation is building itself for and positioning itself for the future with confidence and with a clarity that we never had before. So the challenge for rapid nation building, particularly in the North and the East, was immense by the time the conflict ended. Many of the macroeconomic features of those provinces were weak by the time the terrorism ended. Naturally, it was so because there was so much turmoil, people never were able to look at development. So there was much to be done, and that had to be done soon. So we had to take some very, very quick steps to ensure that normal life returns to this part of the country. 